Hello everyone, still on Arima modeling. I have covered step one identification. I have taken you through how you can estimate and I have also shown you how to perform some diagnostic checks. So in this video, I will show you how you can forecast a series. It is important that you go through these prerequisite videos. You need to know the basics of Arima, know how to identify tentative models, know how to estimate such models, and you must know what diagnostics are required to be carried out. Remember that the essence of fitting an ARIMA model is to forecast the future values of a particular series. In other words, we are only using the past values of the series itself to explain its future occurrence. Simply saying, let the series speak for itself. But you should know that the forecast must be based on the final selected model. So whatever model you are using as a final ARIMA model, that is the model that should be used for forecasting. When you have identified such model and you have done your forecast, then the forecast graph will be shown. How do you know whether the forecast is good or not? You need to verify by plotting the graph of the forecasted series against the actual series. Then go ahead and make your conclusion. Like I said before, the forecast must be based on the adjusted ARIMA model and uh, we've been using the differenced GDP, not the differenced log GDP. And the adjusted ARIMA model, which our forecast will be based on, is is the one coded here in green. So here in eViews, recall this result, which is for the adjusted ARIMA model. So it is upon this result we are going to base our forecast. So we come here, we click on forecast. The GDP button is indicated, and by default, the forecast name is automatically generated by eViews with the F indicating the forecast value. I'm going to modify the forecast sample to reflect only 1991 which is 1991 quarter one to 1991 quarter four, because that is the sample period that we are forecasting. Every other thing looks fine. I click OK. So here we have the forecast graph for GDP. It lies within the plus or minus two standard error or the 95% confidence interval. But in isolation, this graph does not make much sense. So for you to know how close your forecast is to the actual values that you have, you need to plot the forecast graph against the actual graph to know how well you have predicted that particular series. So for us to know how accurate this forecast is, we need to plot it against the actual GDP figures. So to do that, I'm going to modify the range to reflect only 1991 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. So my start date is now 1991 quarter one, ending at 1991 quarter four. I click OK. So resize involves removing 84 observations. Do I want to continue? Yes. So you can see the range and the sample, they have all been resized to reflect just 1991 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. The only reason why I'm doing this is because I need to plot the forecast graph against the actual GDP graph. So I come here on the command line, I type plot GDP, then GDPF, which is a plot of the forecast graph. I press the enter key. So here we have the forecast graph in red and the actual GDP figures in blue for period 1991 quarter one to 1991 quarter four. So what will you conclude if you have such a graph? If we look at quarter one and quarter two, there's a large deviation from what you can see here. The prediction from quarter two to quarter three is almost exact. If you see it here, between here, while there's a slight deviation in prediction quarter three to quarter four. Remember the essence of ARIMA modeling is for forecast and you are not likely to make an exact forecast because you are only forecasting future values. So overall, I would say this forecast is good. Even though we have a uh, wide deviation between quarter one and quarter two, quarter two and quarter three are almost exact. At some point, it's even exact. You can see here. While the deviation between Q3 and Q4 is not much. So overall, I'll give this forecast a pass mark. So try your hands on ARIMA modeling, improve your skills in identifying the tentative model, in estimating, remember those criteria that must be in place for you to select the ideal model, know how to read your correlogram of residuals, make sure it is flat, that is the ideal correlogram. So just to reiterate um, my earlier conclusion, parsimony is important. Parsimonious models produce better results than over parameterized models. If you have too many variables, remember you are going to lose degrees of freedom. If you are not careful, 
most of your coefficients may become statistically not significant and you may end up having a negative R squared. Under diagnostics, always look out for a flat correlogram. A flat correlogram is most ideal because it tells you that there is no information left uncaptured. And in doing that, avoid overfitting an Arima model. Just like I said earlier, the focus must be based on your chosen ARIMA model. There can never be an exact or perfect ARIMA model. Two individuals can look at this same data and they will come up with different but very close ARIMA models because ARIMA modeling is more of an art than of science. Please go through these references on the screen. I will retreat again. Video tutorials are not replacements for reading. Please read so that you can have so much confidence when you are applying all these econometric skills. It's been wonderful having you around. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and for watching my videos and for sharing. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with more interesting videos.